It's a visit with the person of high strangeness. We have not taken you to any metaphysical um, anything at all for some time, so I thought maybe we'd do that today. In 2002, I met some people, Mead and Randy Shaw. I'm sorry, Randy and Hope Mead. Got it all wrong. I got Randy Shaw in my brain here. Well, anyway, um, we did some interviews with them, and uh, they they were affiliated with um, James Gilliland, uh, which has a he has a retreat down by Mount Adams. Um, the circumstances I met them under was uh, there was a film festival, and they had produced a piece. It was it's called Orbs. The veil is lifting, and. Um, they actually won an award with it, and they, at that time they gave me permission to share that with you. And we did, uh, back in 2003. And um, because things are getting a little metaphysical again as a whole, so I thought maybe I would share this uh, program with you in its entirety. And um, in, in essence what they say that the orbs are actually spiritual manifestations that are extensions of our consciousness. And so, when we're not in a physical form, we often travel into light spheres, 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 P H, P S P H E R E. It's way beyond the nuts and bolts to understand this kind of science. And in the universe we live in, we can measure less than one percent of all physical physicists believe that there is another ninety-nine percent out there that we cannot measure. There are other planes in other dimensions and those orbs are a byproduct of those planes and dimensions. And um, with everything going on in the world, uh, the you know the um, Iran issue and uh, things in Honduras and it's, it's, everything is just a little um, complicated right now. So that's why I thought we would go metaphysical here for a minute and um, the, the original show made its round around the world people loved it and I hope that you also enjoy it uh, as much as as we did back in 2003 in the meantime many of you that saw the original show had um, got out your digital camera and uh, and started shooting some of these things that you perceive now there was a time when it was thought that it was only be digital equipment that would do this you know or capture it but <coughs> excuse me that's not really true altogether because way before then when we had the great big um, cameras with the VH with with regular VHS um, with the regular VHS um, tapes in it. Um, back in 1995 I had captured orbs in form of little permits and UFOs. Then we went to the uh, to the CVHS tapes and they were not digital, they were analog also and at that time I managed to capture some of them also. And uh, But the digital age sure has made things easier for us to capture uh, that the naked eye can't see. A uh, lady sent me a picture with a pig that was full of orbs, so we don't know what the pig was thinking or where it was. So so when you get pictures that look like they have a disturbance in it or they, they didn't come out very good, chances are you got some orbs and kind of take a look at that and compare them with your friends and um, you'll be amazed the shapes and, and, and things that you'll see. In fact, ever once in a while they look like um, if they can look at like animals and clouds and all kinds of things. So I'm going to be quiet now. I will show you um, Orbs the Veil is Lifting in its entirety. And uh, just to refresh your memory that beautiful things have been there for a long time. We just kind of neglected to look for them for a little while. Enjoy.
Throughout the ages, sages have agreed there is more to reality than we can perceive. Most of the cosmos lies behind a veil. This veil is lifting, allowing us to see traces of a greater reality. There are many questions about this phenomenon, but anyone with a camera and an open mind can explore it for themselves. What I know is that when I'm taking photographs of the orbs, it's a really heartening feeling, a really joyful feeling. There's a feeling of no worries, that life works and, and everything really will be all right. And then when I view the images after, after I take them, it's, it's just amazing. It's amazing to see what was there while the photographs were being taken. The only explanation that I can think of that, that feels really right to me is that the veil between dimensions is lifting and that what we're experiencing in the orb photography is seeing through the veil. I had my first orb experience at Sat the Sanctuary. The Sanctuary is home to James Gilliland's Self Mastery Earth Institute and ESETI, Enlightened Contact with Extraterrestrial Intelligence. Sattva is dedicated to the awakening and healing of humanity and the earth, body, mind, and spirit. My husband Randy and I went there to play music for an event and while we were there, people were taking pictures with digital cameras and getting these very strange, round objects on the camera. Even though I had a digital camera with me, I only took two shots because I was more into experiencing being there than I was into documenting. When I got home from the experience and looked at the two shots that I had, and we blew them up and examined them, and I was really struck and thought, I, ha I have to go explore this more. And so I had this idea because I had heard that they really like women and children and soft energy. And so I imagined what it would be like to go back with my family and have my husband, my two boys and I all together in the field. And I wondered what we would attract. And so we created that and we went back to the sanctuary. and. At first it seemed like there was nothing, and then suddenly it was snowing orbs all over us. They were taking us over. It was the most remarkable, joyful feeling. During our stay at the sanctuary, we got to know James as he shared his multi-dimensional stories and pictures with us. One such image showed a light beam coming from the sky. James explained that the photo was taken of him while he was meditating in contact with a ship. Another image he shared was taken during a healing with the Virgin Mary. When James was in the field playing with the orbs, they didn't seem to be around. Then James said, shoot up to my left. I was astonished to see that he could feel them coming towards him. One of the many phenomena happening here at the Safa Sanctuary is the phenomenon called orbs. Orbs are an extension of consciousness. When we're not in the physical form, we often travel in the light sphere. It's way beyond the nuts and bolts to understand this, this kind of science. The universe we live in, we can measure less than 1%. And all physicists believe that there's another 99% out there that we cannot measure. There's other planes, other dimensions, and these orbs are a byproduct of those other planes and dimensions. They respond to consciousness, to human consciousness. We take pictures where there are no orbs at all. We put uh, children and women out there and tell them to focus and send out as much love for each other and send love to the orbs as well, and the whole field fills up with orbs. So. We take before and after pictures. We take pictures indoors. People say these orbs are snow or rain or, or uh, water spots on the film. These are all incorrect because one picture will show no orbs. The next picture shows a whole field of orbs. And these are taken at times when there is no rain. The humidity is down to zero. 
and they're also taken indoors. So it just doesn't add up to be anything other than a phenomenon. It's a real phenomenon as to what that phenomenon is that we can uh, delve deeper into. Orbs have been seen around Machu Picchu, the pyramids, many spiritual places where their vortexes or high energy places you might call them have orbs or other phenomenon. There's so many different types of orbs. The orbs are actually spiritual manifestations. They're extensions of consciousness. There are very high, highly advanced, what you might call extra, extraterrestrials of the greater family of man, which are ancient ancestors. And they know how to travel in spirit, which is a light sphere. And that light sphere can go and interact and engage and observe people. So that's my understanding of these orbs. There's many different types of orbs. There's different types of beings involved with these orbs. And it's very important for each individual to go within and feel the nature and the intent behind these manifestations and go by their own inner, sen inner sensitivity, their own inner guidance to decide what orbs are for them. We made several trips back to Sattva after that. James introduced us to his new caretaker, Sean, who seemed very comfortable dealing with the multidimensional facets of orbs. I see him. I see an energy field. And normally what I do is, I'll, let's say I'm at a particular spot, then I just, try to think of their energy and I bring them in that way um, or I'll go to the spot that they're in but they are moving, they are in motion I believe that there is some form of consciousness um, everything that has name has spirit and these have a name, orbs and so their spirit can act with that in, in some manner um, they do seem to be attracted to different types of things and in that sense there must be uh, some type of even minuscule consciousness uh, connected with them. I mean I've seen them but I didn't understand what I was seeing or their relation to us or was it something that was generated in my own mind because other people couldn't see them. What I'm attracted to is what I see all that comes off the camera. Um, the different colours, shapes, sizes, types of figures associated with them. Um, the attraction is that what I am seeing uh, with the camera allows other people to see. It brings a certain amount of awareness 